Welcome gamers to Master of Magic. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this one-off video. It's going to be a, an introduction to Scourge of the Seas, which is the new DLC which is coming out in about a week's time. Now I love Master of Magic. I, it's one of my favourite games. I really do enjoy it a lot. But, 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 there is one big, big issue that's been with the game ever since release. Uh, it, it, every time I play the game, every time I start up a new version or a new time that I start the game again, I run into the same problem and I do want to just get it off my chest at the start of this before we get into all the wonderful things this DLC does add. And that is that the game does not remember what your start setups were. Um, it remembers the setup itself. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go to a new game. I'm going to talk about the specifics of the DLC in, in just a minute. I've set all these things up. It remembers all these. That's fine. That's, there's not a problem there. There's more things we'll talk about in just a minute that, that are coming, coming up in this particular uh, area as well. I love what they're doing here, by the way. So continue. Then we choose, let's just say that we're going to create like a, a standard uh, like or a custom, uh, custom wizard. And so I've been trying to play for the last hour with this new character. I'll just call him Daz Tactic. Every single time that I don't get what I want, I need to then come back in and um, and do the whole thing again, which is really it's almost it is unforgivable actually. It's not just almost unforgivable. It is unforgivable. This is one of the new things. Sea Master will come back to that one. I'll just grab Stone Mason. I'm just going to grab a little bit of of sorcery and the rest in nature. Um, so I've got very specific things. It doesn't remember any of this, which is really so frustrating. It is so frustrating. It's um, it's uh, beyond annoying. And uh, so you have to come through every single time. What did I choose? What were the settings that I had? I, I know this. I know this off by heart now because I've literally done this for the last hour before recording that. So I, I am at the height of my frustration as I start to record this. I then go to next, choosing the new scourges, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. I'll make this the blue colour, and then I begin. And so the game then will sort of go in and build the actual map for me. But every single time, if I don't get the start that I want, and as I say, I have been trying to get the start I've wanted for about an hour, and um, this is not good enough to have to go back out and do all of that every single time, instead of something like, for example, with Galactic Civilizations, and I don't like comparing games, but Galactic Civilizations and, um, you know, before that... Um, Fallen Enchantress, just control N, bang. That was it. It would just regenerate the new world based on the settings that it, you had just put into the actual game itself. Now this, you sort of think, okay, like it's you're on a river, okay. Um, there's no nothing. There's nothing special around you. Uh, you know, it's not. It's not. It, well, it is bad. It's it, this is even no matter who I'm playing as, this is bad. But the reason that I've been doing this time and time and time again is because I'm playing as the as the new um, the new faction, which is the uh, which is the scourges, and the scourges have a special building, which is critical that you get that at the start of the game. It, it is not it's not just one of these little nice to haves. It is so important to get that one because it gives you three extra gold and three extra food right from the very very start of the game. But you have to start right on the coast. I'm one away from the coast. Not good enough. I have to be. The coast has to come into one of these one of these uh, locations. And uh, even then, I still don't have anything extra. So this is still not good enough. So it's escape, escape, quit to menu, quit without saving. Instead of just going at this stage, control N and regenerate. I'm back here again. New game. Continue because it did save all that, which is good. <laughs> Back to, to picking the, the character, naming the character. I should make you guys sit and while I actually see how many more times it's going to take before I get what I want. It's uh, super frustrating. I was going with that one and that one. I was going three of these. See, I just know this because I've spent an hour doing exactly the same thing. Time and I don't need Wall of Stone because I've already got it. Um, I'll, I'll get rid of I'll take Stone Skin in this case. Get rid of those, put those into there. It's just not good enough. This is not good enough. Also, the scourges should start on the sea. There should be no, you shouldn't have to do this. But if, you, if you're if you playing as a new faction, and look, I don't know if I have that changed by the time the game launches, but I can't believe it that they don't have a way of, of recording what you had set up so that you can save what your setup was 
and then be able to just go, okay, that's the one, bang, start a new game. Um, I'll see, I'll, I'll try it, and I'll just keep on generating and generating and generating, and we'll see until how long it takes before we get a, a viable start playing as a new faction. I really hope that they have this fun fixed by the time the game launches. I don't think there's time to, to get it fixed. Maybe they'll have it so that you can do it. This is so close. Look at this. We're one away, though. I don't get what I need. I've got one little extra thing of some extra food there, but I don't get what I need. Okay, I'm just going to keep on generating, and I'll show you every single generation until we get what we want. Okay, three. Still not close enough to the to the ocean. Plus, there's no specials, so that would have been a restart anyway. It's at four. It takes about a minute every time to do this, so... There's Mithril, which would have been great, plus a uh, power node in there as well, but still not, still not on the ocean. Being on the ocean is more important than these other benefits. Five, just missing out. We're not quite on the on the edge. Six, what's that, seven, I guess. Eight, here we go, uh, rendition nine, uh, but it doesn't have anything special inside it, so even though it's on the coast um, and... What it does allow us to have a look at is in the build queue, we have a special building called the Raider's Hut. So it requires a shoreline. <laughs> you can see that that's a requirement. Effect, gain three food and three gold. So it's a massive building. It's, it's very, very cheap. You get it very, very early. And um, it's, a, it's an absolute essential that you have this if you're playing as a scourge, the scourges. And so um, there we go. It took nine turns to just get it generated. I'm going to save it because it's still not what I would consider to be a good location at all. 10, 11, 12, but this location again isn't too bad. You've got gold, which does give you a plus three gold. You've got another plus two there with silver, and then you've got some plus two there with food. Um, it's still not good enough. I mean, like this, you really should be starting, if you're playing the Scourges, they should have a coastal tile. They absolutely should have a coastal tile. I'll keep on going. 13, again, a really good location to start on, except for the Scourges, because we don't have this one little coastal tile that we require. Oh my god, this game is driving me nuts. It doesn't take a minute to generate one of these. It takes about between two and three minutes. It's been half an hour now to get these 13 generated, and still nothing really what we want. I mean, this one, again, I would play it because you've got Mithril. Um, I would accept it. Uh, we do actually have our, at least our gold covered. Uh, having the Mithril is certainly sort of a, an advantage. We don't have any extra food, uh, which will then sort of slow our, down, our development down and we won't because we won't get that special building for the Scourges. Uh, it's very, very, very frustrating, I've got to say. That, that, that it's, that it's do, that, A, that it doesn't ha start them next to the coast, and I, I'm hoping that this is a bug and they have it fixed by the time it launches. But the second thing is to not be able to just regenerate a, a, a world with the same settings is, I'd have to say, unforgivable at this stage. Um, it is so frustrating. It's been frustrating me for a long, long period of time. I forget about it when I start playing the game because the game is so good. It's just this generation, and this with this new DLC and this new um, this new faction, it's so important. Uh, it's so important you get the, the start that you need, um, more than any other faction, to be honest. And uh, so being able to just generate world after world after world is a critical component of starting the game for any faction, but now more than ever with this new faction. And um, it's really not good enough, I've got to say. I'm, I'm, I'm super frustrated. It's now been an hour and a half of generating worlds uh, to, try to, get a, to try to get a viable start. And still, I like this start for most things. I just, it's just not ideal for showing off the, um, the DLC in any sort of way. So for me, it's still a reject. I'll probably save this one because it's one that I, I would accept, but it's not, it's not the ideal for doing video content on a new faction that has a very special building. Anyway, I'll keep, I'll, I will save this one as well, but I'm getting very, very frustrated if you can't tell. 14, so 15 now. Um, still not on the coast, but we do actually have food, we do have gold, we do have coal as well. Uh, again, not a bad start um, at all, actually, except that we're not able to show off the DLC properly with this start. I think we're up to 16. Oh my god, here we are. 17 generations. 
Uh, three quarters of an hour later, by the way, um, since we started this exercise of regenerating worlds. Not good enough, but this is a viable start for us. Uh, we've got some coal over here, which isn't fantastic. I wish we would have got the mithril. So we've got mithril there, but that's just one off, but that's, you know, like, this is a good start. We've got extra gold there as well. Uh, we have a reef, which gives us plus two more gold and reduces the production cost of buildings. This is new in the DLC, by the way. So finally, I have a start that I can actually show how to play the game. <laughs> We're on the coast, which is the important thing. Yeah, we've got coal over through here. It reduces the construction cost of normal units by 10%. So we end up with a, a little bit of a cheaper way of do, doing different sorts of things in through here as well. So, um, oh my God, that was so, this has been such a painful exercise to get to this point. Anyway, I'm going to save this. Just on a whim, can we jag two in a row? The game owes me. It owes me big, big time. <laughs> it's been so frustrating. Let's see what it can do. But see, it, it just takes time. My God, why isn't there just a control in or a button just to restart? Um, just something, you know, like it's, um, yeah, it's really not good enough. I'm going to be, I'm really angry about that. <laughs> if you can't tell. Ah, here we go. We've got another start. We've got a, another start. Wow, we jagged two in a row, guys. We jagged two in a row. This one has got, if I just press tab, got Ocean Pearls. We get three power plus three gold to the nearby town. This is really, really powerful. We got another three gold there as well. Um, that's it. But this is, a, again, a really good start for the Scourges. So uh, we, we've, jagged, um, we've jagged two good starts in a row after th uh, well, over three quarters of an hour now of generating worlds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this because I've got live streams I need to do. So I'm going to use one of these for the live stream and one of them for, for if I'll probably create a YouTube series as well. Oh my god, we finally got here. It's like it's been toying with me for, uh, for you know, uh, well, about two hours now uh, before it finally gives me something that I can actually use. Anyway, let's go back to the menu and we'll now go through the pretty amazing DLC. So yes, I've had a I've had my dummy spit. I've um, had my big, big complaint. That's a. I'm really am annoyed that that is still not a factor in the game where you can where you can just regenerate a, a um, you, you, whatever you had set up. That you've got to go through the whole selection of um, um, just to summarise it, just so that it's fully in there of going through from creating your, your wizard, like you know, customizing whatever you wanted to do with the actual wizard itself, including what they what your actual choices are for the wizard, your choice of spells, and then gener generating a world. It's because there's very rarely a game in this with with just with sorry with Master of Magic where you do keep on um, where you keep, we do get exactly what you want first go anyway. So it's it is an exercise in frustration, not just for the scourges, but the scourges really exacerbate it. So anyway, let's just go back, quit without saving. I mean, I have saved it, so it's okay. I've got a I've got a few starts there now that I can actually sort of uh, a couple of starts that are viable. Right, so let's go and talk about Scourge of, uh, Scourge of the Sea and what it does actually bring into the game itself. So if I go and start a new game, yet again, <laughs> I'm very good at this. It does actually introduce a few little things into here as well. Now, I think some of these will just become part of the, the base game. And so we've got things like the... Um, if you, maybe they were, already were here. Look, the, the things at the bottom here, I'm not sure if they came in with this DLC or not. The casting skill cost. I think this is new. Um, so this option reduces the required casting skill points for increasing the casting skill. So 10% reduction will reduce the cost from 100 to 90 and so on. So you've got different ways of then sort of choosing what you want into here for the setups. You've also then got the, um, actually this is new as well, the layer density. So set the number of layers and dungeons that appear on the world map at the start of the game and water layer density as well. So you can sort of change those to whatever you want, however you want them to sort of then be operating. I've just got them on half at this stage, but you can have whatever you wanted in through there as well. Water layers are now very important with the Scourge um, DLC. This is actually now a really, really important one. So this is the number of water layers that appear on the world map. Um, the water has had a lot of attention, and, and it really does flesh out really, really quite nicely. So now I can start being positive about the game. Now that we've got all of that negativity out of our system and have finally generated a, a very, very nice world, uh, just go continue. So uh, what we end up having here now is we end up with um, with four new um, four new wizards that we actually have. 
And so we've got uh, Belit back in through this other side, who is a sea master and a pirate. And I'll talk about what these actually are when we start the game. Pirate is a really interesting play style. Uh, and I'll, I'll come back and talk about these. There's a fair few extra things that you can now choose for your customization. And so Belit is a sea master pirate. And as I say, pirate is a um, takes three choices. It's a, it's an expensive choice. It's a you play after you have to play tall when you're playing as the pirate. Uh, very very interesting way of playing. Um, so in this case, she's coming with a little bit of astral, a little bit of a little bit of death as well with what she actually then gets to do. Then we actually have Sir Horatio, who is a sea master tactician. So different again. So we've got this sort of like she is the um, sea master pirate. So this is a, these are these are all new that have, that have been brought into the game. Uh, then we actually have Queen Z, uh, La, I think it's an L or Ya Zla in this case. So see, she's a, a supreme hive queen, and we've got a couple of extra things in through here. We've now got Hive Master, which has come in, which I'll talk about as well. Power of the People, which is new as well. Warlord is not; that's old. But when you play as the Hive Master, you pretty much have to play as the as the uh, as the Clackon. And what I like about this one, it's it finally makes the Clackons, well for me anyway, a viable faction to play with this particular Hive Master uh, approach. It's sort of because um, they've always been a bit a bit sort of weak and and uh, nasty to play. So this one actually is pretty cool. Actually, to be able to get this one, I'll talk about this when we go into a bit more depth as well. And um, and then we've got the last one of them is Gain, who is um, again we're talking about the, the uh, ocean and the water. And so the one sort of other water nation really up until this point in time has been the lizard men. And so this is a proud lizard man. He's a sea master and also a sea hunter. So we're seeing a lot of the new things coming and being presented with these four new wizards. But if we go back in and um, and choose our own wizard, like if we just go back in and I'll just choose um, this one here, I'll just call this one Daz Tactic. I'm used to I'm used to selecting him, I'm used to typing in Daz Tactic. <laughs> that's that's just all cosmetic, that, that bit of it through there. So when we come back into this other other side, we've got like three pages now of um, of extras. There's only one on the on the third page at this point in time. But this is getting more and more fleshed out, which is really, really exciting for the game as well. And so the last of the updates that came through brought the Necromancer, the Death Eater, the Orcmancer, etc. And so now we actually have um, we've got six new ones uh, that then come further in. So the Hive Master, I'll just talk about these ones. The Hive Master connects to the Clackon collect, uh, Collective, which is, the Clackon is your insectoid race. The, the wizard gains plus five casting skill for every Clackon unit in battle. In addition, the Clackons under the wizard's rule are no longer as, as disliked by other races, and the Clackon hero Fayim, uh, the, the Philomath, joins at the start of the game. So you end up with a, a hero right from the very, very start, which is actually quite fairly powerful. The wizard only works, uh, sorry, the trait only works with the Clackon race. Cannot be taken with other race exclusive traits, and the Hive Master costs two picks. And so that now makes the Clackons a very viable faction to play. So you've got more casting points in, in combat. Uh, not that that's a major thing, but you, you will actually have a bit more there that you can do with your spell casting. But also being able to uh, run as the Clackons and not have everyone, not, not be the absolute pariah of all the other factions is pretty big. That's a pretty big one. Nothing at all to do with the seed that's, that's come through. It's just a, um, it's plugged a gap in the game, which is fantastic. Uh, Seamaster in through here. So the Seamaster provides all units that already have the ability to swim, including non-corporeal and fantastic units under the command of the wizard, with plus one to movement points on the overland map. Now, the overland map means basically not in, not in combat, but in the actual, when you're moving around on the map itself, which is, um, which is big. And so that's your lizard men, it's your scourges, and it's special units as well. So um, additionally, ships built or gained under the watchful eye of the shipmaster begin their water journey with boosted level, like plus three levels, and are cheaper to build by minus 20%. So these are, uh, again, um, important if you are wanting to make use of the actual oceans and having, having ships as well. So uh, particularly with the new Scourge faction, like, like they, they've got some pretty amazing things that do come with, with, uh, with you know, to do with, the, with their ships. I was going to say with the sea, but it's actually beyond the sea. Uh, okay, that costs two picks. Power of the people. So your, your loyal subjects are exceptionally attuned to magic, 
With the power of the people, the wizard's capital race gives plus one power per population. So minus um, uh, minus power of the so yeah power of the people cost two picks. This is big as well. Like this is going to allow pretty much it wouldn't matter what faction you play. That could be very very viable. Um, imagine playing like as the um, as the elves or something like that that really do sort of uh, are more attuned to power. Um, that's a really nice little addition. It's it's costing two points, so it's not cheap. Then we have a three-pointer, the pirate. So the pirate wizard thrives on conquests and raids. When they choose to raise an enemy city, they gain extra gold and an additional reward based on the size of the city. Additionally, the wizard gains a unit of the of the leashed from the raid, which is like a special. Uh, it's it's a it's a special unit that's just come into the game itself. Actually, they also gain fame for raising the city, but will lose fame for keeping one. Beware! The pirate trait also triggers a pirate rebellion event in your cities when you own more than six towns. So really, it's one of these things where you're going to get punished if you end up with more than six towns, uh, and it does encourage you then to sort of uh, raise and burn everyone everything else around you uh, as you sort of start your your conquest across the across the map so it's interesting that one there so that's three picks it's sort of almost like a, an opposite way of, of playing which is um quite interesting and quite exciting uh then we actually have tactician and tactician is as a supreme tactician the wizard is able to plan their battles well and thus add plus one to movement points in combat to all units under their command in addition, the wizard gives an, ad an advantage to their troops in battle and allows them to always begin the, the combat first, no matter if they are the defender or the attacker. The wizard tower defense is exempt from this and will still shoot first. This is, again, massive. Um, if you go in with weak units, for example, like sprites, which have got like a ranged attack, and you need to have your initial attack go in before they get to, like before the enemy gets to fire at your at your sprites, um, this is a big, big advantage to, to be able to go in with the tactician skill and shoot first, do whatever damage you possibly can, then hopefully sort of allow your, you know, your 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 expensive, uh, fragile units to then survive whatever's coming. So it's a very interesting way of again of of just enhancing the game, and so that that one does cost two picks. Again, it's a it's a powerful, powerful way of playing the game. And then finally, the last one is Sea Hunter. So the Sea Hunter wizards uh, give um, give great bonuses to their troops when engaged in, in water-based combat. All units under the command of the wizard in a battle gain plus two to all stats apart from hit points and the ability to swim. And so this one again is is a like if you're going to be doing any sort of like a real lot of um, of attacking on the actual ocean itself, uh, this one does give you a big advantage in the battles that do occur on the ocean. Now, there's not very many of them where that does occur, but it does allow that to happen. So um, so it's sort of one of these things. It's only worth one point, but it does give you a massive advantage on the actual ocean itself. So they're the different traits, if we have a bit of a look. Um, I've been sort of just building up, uh, because I, 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 I like one thing I've, as I've been playing the Scourge, I've been finding them a bit weak in terms of being able to build up quickly. Uh, so I've been going with Stonemason up through here to, to get the extra production. You also get the, the, the stone walls around your, your city. You get plus 10 production. Um, so um, yeah, in addition, the capital, the capital gains plus 10 production. And so you then also have everyone can then build roads as well, which is, um, can be very, very important in the game. So that just sort of opens things up a little bit. So I think that Stonemason in conjunction with Seamaster is a good one for, to play as the Scourge. So I've been sort of just choosing those two as my sort of go-to for sort of trying to learn the game because this one does give you an accelerated start. Uh, from there, I've been choosing three Sorcery and the rest in Nature, so five Nature. And the reason for this is because... Um, well, there's no great reason, to be honest. Like, like, if I just go across to next, I've been wanting to get the sprites because these are a good way to clear out um, clear out things that are, that are a bit of a problem. Web's always a handy one to have. I've been getting resist elements because this is also, once you start to get heroes, that can save a hero. And stone skin as well, I've been getting just to sort of as protection. Playing with the... Um, with the one that we actually have with the, the stone mason, we no longer need wall of stone. So that's not really a requirement of our, ours anymore. Just go across to the next. And from here, I've been getting the phantom warriors, which are really, really cool. Very, very um, powerful in combat. 
So, uh, so that's that's one that that, that can be a very very viable uh, spell to use in in combat itself. I think it's probably the for me, it's the most powerful of the combat spells. <laughs> like you think of your fireballs and all those sorts of things. They don't do a lot of damage, but these often tend to. They don't last long, but they do a good job. And also they soak up damage that like to protect the rest of your forces as well. Like it just means that there's more targets for the enemy to then go, go and, and fire at. And also resist magic as well. I do like this one just to get a little bit more protection for when you start to get your heroes. So that's sort of been my choice. Just going to go across to next. Scourges is the new faction. So that if we have a bit of a look at this one, we can see the Scourges were once part of the Orc clans, but they did not uh, want to let go of their warlike nature. The Renegades took the seeds for pillage, plunder, and shackle their enemies, becoming one of the most fearsome pirates known in the two realms. Alas, this was not the end of their tale, as one day a dark, unrelenting a curse doomed all the pirates to, uneternal, to eternal undeath. Thus the Scourges came to be, spectral beings driven by greed and the envy of the living. The, so these are essentially sort of like an, an undead or, or, or a um, eternal undeath is what's been applied to them. Um, yep, so they've got the jealousy runs so deep that they even insist on producing lavish amounts of food that they cannot devour. And so a growth rate uh, is fast, so they do actually grow very, very quickly. So the, ba the base rate of uh, plus 15 people per turn, which is actually a lot when we compare that, for example, the, the orcs really are your, your stock standard. They've got a, a regular growth rate. Um, who else? They're slow, negative 30. Lizard men are plus 10. Nomads, minus 10. Clackons, I thought normally they were pretty fast. Oh, they're, okay, they're, they're minus 10. Zero. Minus 20, halfling zero, gnolls are minus 10, barbarians are plus 20. So uh, scourges are not quite as fast as the barbarians, but they're up there. So uh, crossover through here with the Mirren races, we can't choose them because uh, we, we didn't choose to start with any of the Mirren factions as such. But with the scourges, um, so we've got the, the fast growth rate. Building restrictions, cannot build the shipyard fantastic stables, cathedrals, or universities. And so these don't really matter that much. Um, we have unique buildings playing as the Scourges, and so I'll be able to sort of show that as well. Um, so the shipyard doesn't matter because we've got our own shipyard. Um, the others, others would have been handy, I guess, but we don't really have a need for it. They're mainly there for building uh, units, and um, we've got some very, very powerful units that we can ultimately get. Other modifiers, so plus one melee attack for units, uh, except uh, non-racial units. So non-corporeal, this is really important, uh, uh, except for non-racial units. And cloak of fear, except for leashed, Rusalka, and the captain, and the ghost ship. These are, so cloak of fear cr uh, creates an aura of fear around these undead uh, orcs, these, these sort of sea orcs. And so these, and they're, they're non-corporeal, which means that they, essentially are floating units and can cross any terrain very, very quickly, and they can go through walls. So that's a big, big, big deal with, that, with, the, basic, with, the, with the basic units. Racial units are the Rasalka, um, which is, we'll have a look at this when we actually get into the game itself, the Captain, the Sea Creatures, and through, in through here as well, which is a very, very high level uh, combat unit, and then the Paragon Ghost Ship, which is the um, pinnacle of the... Um, of the ships that we actually end up having, but they're not just ships, these are floating ghost ships, which means that they can go across the land as well. So they're pretty cool, the way that they, that they do work. Uh, they're also transports, these particular ships. We'll, we'll get into that when we get into the game and oh, they, they can sort of show you what does go on. So we end up with uh, two, production, uh, two food production per farmer and uh, 0.5 of the um, of the uh, hammers uh, per farmer. The workers provide only 1.5 hammers, whereas, for example, the orcs are two. I think everyone else will be basically two. So we don't produce very quickly, which is why starting off with the extra, extra hammers um, with the uh, stonemason uh, for the scourges is a good, is a good um, choice for them, just to sort of, it's only for our capital, but it's, it gives us enough of a start to be able to then sort of move forward. And so that's a good good one for us. And um, and then Rebels produce nothing at all. I mean, some of the other ones, the Rebels do, like this one, the Rebels do a little bit of extra production, for example. But in this case, the Scourges are a very, very good faction. I'll just choose, I've just been choosing blue because they're, they're ocean styled. Let's begin and see what we end up getting. Do we get a third time in a row, a viable start? <laughs> 
this will be um, will ho hopefully will be what it will be. But it's um, but you can see there. There's all all these different ways of playing the game now as well, and and this has really enhanced what the game has actually got. Play for a little bit. It's uh, half an hour in. I'll, I'll play for a little bit just so you can sort of get to see what's going on. We'll go through the different buildings that we have available to us and the different units. And I do want to show the maps because the uh, the sea is now quite a an important aspect of the game. No, this one's not viable. I'll load up one of the other ones. I couldn't resist myself. I wanted to just finish off. I think this is number 20. <laughs> I just wanted to get a nice round number. Uh, unfortunately, a very, very poor start again. But um, yeah, look, it, it, I've got a I've been sort of complaining about this aspect of the game of not being able to generate new versions of it, uh, but also about the when you're playing as the scourges where you don't get where it doesn't come in and you you don't start with water next to you. The water starting next to you, they may like this is this is before launch, so the version I'm playing is not the launch version. I do want to preface that, and obviously, you know, I do want to actually sort of make sure I make a strong point about that. That may be fixed by the time the game launches. Um, I think it needs to be in the game where if you're playing as a Scourges, you do start with some water next next to you, uh, simply so you've got access to the, that special building, or they just make sure that you have that building. Um, you know, like one of the two. It's I think it's I think it's super important when you are playing as the um, as the Scourges. So anyway, um, yeah, that's it, it. Yes, it is very very frustrating at this point in time. But this is not the released version of the um, of the game. This is a, it's still sort of like an early, early early access version, just for me to be able to sort of do the recording. So things will change, not may change. They will change. So um, it may be different by the time you actually grab the game. Anyway, let's go and load up one of the others. Now a few little things uh, with the interface. Uh, they now actually have this one here. You can press a Z or Z if you're from America. You can call it Z if you like. Uh, this is <laughs> this is to show or hide resources. And so when you click that one on it, it does make everything. Actually, we've got um, Mithril underneath our our capital. I don't believe it. If I press Tab, I then can get the cartographer. Sorry, the uh, surveyor mode. So I press Tab through there. We have Mithril. Wow. This is a very good start, actually, guys. Very good start. We have a few that are outside of where, we're, where we, we've got. We've got coal over through here. But I really like this. It, it, it really does a big... Uh, like a, It makes the game a lot easier to actually see what's going on. So I just leave that one on the whole time. And then you can just use the others. And then, of course, in the ocean, we've got things, for example, like ocean pearls. Uh, I'm going to have to go exploring to sort of see other things. You've got um, fish, which give you plus two, ten, uh, plus two food. Um, what else have we got? We're not going to see much of it there. There's some reefs and things back over through here. You do get to see them through the fog of war. Uh, often you see the fish swirling around as well. In the fog of war, there's some fish. <laughs> you can just pick them out, swimming in the clouds, as fish do. Uh, so anyway, that's the. Um, so this is actually a really nice little addition to the um, to the overall look of the game. Plus, I, I am finding that when I'm actually sort of wandering around, they've, they've done something with just the sparkles as well. It feels that way anyway, particularly with the um, with the nature nodes. The nature nodes look quite interesting. I was I was playing earlier, like doing a live stream, and um, and I kept on coming, I didn't mention it in the live stream, but I kept on coming back to it thinking, that looks different. <laughs> I may have had this thing turned on next to it or something, I don't know. Anyway, it's, uh, it's nice the way it does work. And of course, we've had the cartographer now there for a while, we can sort of then go and see what we can spot in through here. They um, they have they they keep on adding things in here. Kraken's lair is is something new, and the tech dungeon. So we have like a, a new end game type threat, I guess, as well so for the actual oceans themselves. And so we're getting more and more things in through here. I, I would love to see this more fleshed out, to be honest, where there was more things that we can then sort of spot. Like it doesn't actually show you the terrain features don't really show up with the actual terrain. I mean, it's a bit hard to do that on this sort of map, but it's, um, anyway, that's the that's the cartographer. That's, as I say, been been in the game for a while. It's, uh, but we do actually have things like the Kraken layers and, and so on and so forth now that are uh, gonna be coming through. Anyway, let's go and have a look. I think the big change is now, like with the scourges, and you've probably been watching this one now for over half an hour thinking, just show me what, they, what they've what they got. What, what, what units have they got? How do things work? Oh, actually, before I do that, <laughs> sorry, you're gonna have to wait. You are gonna have to wait. 
Uh, I'm going to show a um, down through here. Finally, we're getting really cool looking um, settlers as well. And so this is the settlers for the scourges. So this is a, um, like, you know how some of the other ones were just like, I don't know if they have fixed the others with the, like the flying wagons, like a, a, a horse that just flies around for the um, draconians. Like it's, um, I think that was what theirs was. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, I've got a little sort of like a sea snail dragging around a, uh, around a ship. That's, that's the actual... Um, that is the, what am I trying to say? That, that, that is the settler for the scourge. Uh, back and through here as well, we have the, the, um, the scourge of swashbucklers, which we'll go through in a minute what, what each of their different units have got and the different abilities they have. But look how far the swashbuckler can go. Like one, two, three. And because it's um, in, incorporeal, it can actually just, it can travel anywhere. It can sort of uh, float across sea, land, cross mountains, nothing slows it down except for, of course, you know, stuff with, with people in it. But um, one of the other things with this as well is you'll notice that um, at the start of the game, like we've got, um, uh, like we've already got one rebel in there because I took this one out. If I go back and move this one back in, that will then get rid of the rebel because we've then got two units in there. So at the start of the game, you may want to keep that one in. If you are struggling, it's not too bad for me because I've got the extra hammers because we chose the um, stonemason. But if we hadn't have cho chosen the stonemason, this is just a bit of a tip for playing as the scourges. If you if you didn't choose the stonemason, um, you may want to keep everything in initially and then just go for other ways of exploring. For example, like using, uh, using uh, magical creatures for doing that. Um, uh, just to cover, cover what that one is again, you, you may sort of decide, okay, look, let's let's go and uh, get. So we've got a lot more, say one each of um, of research and casting and, and a heap in, into power, getting a lot more into into the, the mana itself. We then close that one, so it gives us like a lot of mana coming back in. Cast spells, and then we actually can get, for example, magic spirits, which are great for searching, sight searching. So um, we can get that in one turn, thirty mana. It's got an upkeep of only one per turn. So you can actually use those to do your initial searching. So we can sort of go that way. Uh, back in through here a little bit further as well. We can then just go back into the city itself. And um, once we go into here, uh, we can then go through, if we go back into build. So let's have a look and see what the unique buildings are that we actually have uh, for the scourges. And so with this one, the Raider's Hut, as I said before, is a critical one this is why you really need to be starting on the shoreline when you do play as the scourges to get something that's only worth 60 60 hammers and you're going to get plus three food and plus three gold this is a must must have you must get this building if you are playing as the scourges which is why the game really must start you on the ocean or generate ocean near you um like right next to you if you are playing as a scourges. So I'm hoping that that is considered a bug and that they do have it fixed, if not at launch, then soon after launch. But that's a very, very important one. And if you don't start on the shoreline, you won't even know that, that that's missing. So if you're playing as a scourges, make sure you start on the shoreline because you do want the Raider's Hut. That is a critically important building. The next thing we have, instead of, our shipyards were taken away from us, but we end up with the Cursed Shipyard. And so the cursed shipyard staffed by the spirits of dockhands who now craft ghostly ships even on land. It's only one maintenance, so it's pretty cheap, and it does allow. There's no requirements. We can get it straight away, and it does require. It does actually allow us then the um, the ghost, ghostly trireme uh, in through here as well as the paragon ghost ship. So both the the two different types of ships you have available are, are available through the cursed shipyard, which then creates creates the ghost ships. Uh, other things we have, I think that's pretty much it. No, we have this one here as well. Indentured Workers Guild. So the Indentured Workers Guild is run by pirates to achieve greater efficiency from captured workers. And the effects are that some folks dislike their practices. So plus one rebel, but it is, it is efficient. So we get plus 10 hammers. And for a poorly efficient group like us, that's big. But then starting with stonemason does the same sort of thing. But this one, you, know, you can get this one fairly early. It's fairly expensive at 165 hammers, but no, nowhere near as, as expensive as the miners guild, for example. So that's an interesting one and a good one to then go and get as well. And it do, does then unlock the captain as well. And so the captain then is, becomes available as one of the actual units. 
Uh, and I think that's all in terms of the unique buildings. I did, a, I did get a question actually when I was live streaming asking what the amplifier was. This one came through with the Soul Trapped DLC. And this one, just anyone can actually have it. It's a tech magic building. But if you do start off with a power node in your territory, you will actually then have access to this particular building. And so um, so this is something that uh, we won't, we don't have it in, in this playthrough, but it is available for any faction if they, if they start next to, next to a... Um, uh, well, with a power node in, inside their territory. There we go. Now, the actual units themselves. Let's go and have a look at these. So we start off with the Scourge of Swashbucklers. By the way, the big, I think the big thing that's missing here, like these will seem, these will seem fairly powerful, except that we don't have our most basic unit. We don't have Spearman units. So everything costs us gold, like as we sort of go through. And so we, this, this one's cost us one gold, one upkeep. But these are a bit more special than just standard, stand, your standard swordsman. So, um, but these become your, your go-to spearmen as well. So you tend to be needing to, to rely on these a fair bit. But they come in with some extra little bits and pieces. So they're a melee attack unit. They've got a, a large shield, which helps them against ranged attacks. They're non-corporeal. So this is um, non-corporeal allows a unit to bypass through any land hex at the cost of one movement point and allows it to move through walls unimpeded. So when you are attacking enemy cities, you can actually bring them straight through the walls. So they can sort of just go through because they're, they're essentially ghost fighters. Uh, then we've also got the cause fear. So each individual enemy unit engaging the feared in, in melee must resist magic or stand frozen in terror, unable to attack even if, even if swung upon. And so this may stop some of the uh, attacks coming back towards you. Um, so that's a uh, so that's a, a resist magic um, uh, attack essentially, or it's a it's a protection that where the enemy has to has to uh, you know roll against against the resistance of magic to get through. The last one is not part of what they are. It's an engineer because we chose uh, the stonemason skills to make up for the for the poor. Um, uh, production that we end up getting from these particular units. Anyway, that's a pretty good unit with these extra little bits and pieces. Very, very adaptable, very quick. So they are they are very, very good. Uh, they, they do cost the one gold, one food though. So they, you know, like as a, as a standard swordsman, that's what you're going to get. Our settler, just standard old settler, back and forth here. Although still does cause fear and is non-corporeal, so can move a long, long distance. Uh, they get an extra movement, like it says, a base movement there of three. Uh, and the scourges are a base movement there of two. The, the extra movement we're getting, I'll just show you where that's coming from, because um, when we do select these, they, they do move further. And that's coming from the shipmaster trait. By the way, these are sort of new in the, in, the, um, in, the, in, the, in the user interface as well. You can sort of open up these and sort of see what you're getting and what, how things are being applied back and through here as well. I think there's a bit of a bug there. Like that's um, that's shipmaster. This one says shipmaster at the top, and, but it's actually sea master. So as a sea master, the wizard is is able to inspire great craftsmen, uh, can build ships and towns at twenty percent. So that's actually it's not. It, well, it says ship there. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Anyway, that's <laughs> that's sort of like the globals that we have that that, that are sort of um, impacting us. And then we sort of have the of course the um, the different things that are impacting us. We're on the shore. Uh, we've, we've, it says there again, shipmaster in through there as well, and then stonemason because we did choose the stonemason. But anyway, let's go back in. We'll just go back into the building. Um, then we have the scourge of bowmen. This is pretty much just the same, the same sort of uh, bowmen that you're going to get with with any of the other stock standard races. There's no nothing special about them. Uh, just one one gold, one food upkeep, um, eight ammo. The uh, uh, your standard like actually these are also just one hit point with six figures so they're not this and they've only got two armor which makes them pretty weak actually in comparison so these aren't the greatest fighters so just you have to be a bit careful of them but uh, that fear hopefully will then sort of kick in to give them some extra protection so it's going to be interesting who they can actually go up and, and uh, fight against um yeah that'll be that this is going to be it's going to be interesting to play as these because they're going to be extremely weak against certain certain um, high magic resistance units, but they're going to be extremely powerful against units that are very susceptible to magic because of the sphere. So uh, they don't get any protection from the non-corporeal. But the, the Scourge of Bowmen have got the same sort of deal in through here, ranged attack. 
They do have the melee, whoops, they do have a melee attack as well, which is the only time that the fear would then kick in if, if they were being attacked with melee. So um, they do actually have like a, some sort of crossbow, but it's not really a, um, a crossbow, it's just a bow. So um, even though it's showing a crossbow, there's no special abilities there with um, punching through armor or anything like that. Uh, Scourge of Cavalry. Again, fairly stock standard with the cavalry. So the upkeep we actually end up having is um, like one and one again. So this is very, very cheap for cavalry. Usually cavalry costs a bit more than this. Uh, melee is good at five. So compare that to this one, which is four. That one's only two melee, but two ranged as well. So this one here has got five, got extra movement. Um, again, it's got the, this one does actually have first strike. So, um, which most cavalry do actually have. It's got the uh, cause fear. Only got the two armor again. So fairly weak in terms of armor. Then we've got the ghostly trireme. So this is sort of like the, the first of our ships. And so we can sort of see through here, this is a transporter. So you can transport up to eight other units with it, which is fairly cool because um, it actually it shows it there. I thought this was actually, this is just standard movement. Um, so this is actually, this one I thought could go on the water as well. I think all of these actually technically can. Movement of, tw of two, but this, the ghostly triremes, are, um, can actually go on ground and water. They sort of float, so they can sort of do both. The uh, the Scourge of Shaman, I haven't actually built one, I haven't, haven't tested that yet, actually. Uh, the Scourge of Shaman as well, these do actually have a healing, these are healers, so uh, you can sort of, and I think they would have a healing spell as well. They've got Purifier um, as well, again, cause fear. They're okay with melee, they've got four ammo with, with a range of two. Um, three armor, so a bit more armored than the others, which is good. So they've, they're viable to actually then be able to use. Even There's only four figures, but only one hit point each. So yeah, only four hit points in total. Makes them fairly squishy again. Um, the Ghostly Trireme, what's that one? It's got six melee with 10 hit points. It's actually pretty better than a lot of the others, to be honest, just as a, as a melee type unit, if it does go on, on land. Uh, then we have the first of our special ones, the Rushalka, which is two gold, one one upkeep in through here, six ammo. Uh, so there is an exotic water nymph, captured by the ghostly buccaneers and forced to dance for, of them forever. She's a powerful cast that can dazzle the battlefield, and so she's got a, a ranged attack of three with six ammo, which is pretty cool. Uh, six figures with one hit point each, three armor, so she's got fairly good protection, good resistance there as well with eight. Uh, she does have a magical range attack again, so she's probably the better. She's almost like a wizard, in, but, uh, uh, but not as strong as the the human wizards, I guess. The uh, muddy charm, so that a charmed unit feels that they should dance, not fight. In reality, with every attack um, ranged, sorry, melee slash ranged, if the attacked unit fails to resist a, um, a resistance check, uh, the land beneath their feet turns to mud and they lose one movement point for one turn. So this one can slow units down. Again, quite an interesting sort of attack with these type of units. Uh, confusion as well, this will be a spell that they can then cast. So cast confusion into the minds of the enemy. So minus four resistance to uh, minus four uh, to resistance. Um, affected units will wander random, randomly, or can even attack their own side. So that's very, this is a very very powerful unit, fairly cheap for what it does do. You only have to get to the anima skill to, to grab one of these. Then we go to the next page. The sea creature is four and one. So we're now sort of jumping up. This one's got six melee, two figures, five hit points each. So a total of total of, of um, ten hit points. This one is not. Uh, this one is actually a dedicated uh, ground and water movement in through here with the uh, with what it actually does do, and um, it's got a stoning gaze as well. So very very powerful unit. Does also have the cause fear. It also has a, a, a shark nado, believe it or not. So summon a terrifying force of the of the deep seas, the shark cyclone, <laughs> made to cause havoc on the battlefield. When I saw this, I just burst out laughing. I thought this is so cool. I love that they sort of bring these cultural tropes into the game. They've done it a few times now with different things. And um, here's the next one. The shark nado is uh, here with the sea creature. So very very cool. I love that. I really really love it. So uh, well done. Well done, Muha Games and um, and Slytherin for, for for bringing that one in. Uh, it only requires the Fighter Skill to get this one, which is fairly early in the game. So it's a powerful unit to sort of end up getting. Um, 
mid-game, basically. Uh, then we have the Captain down through here, which requires the Armourer's Guild and the Indentured Workers' Guild. Again, this is early, and this is fairly early as well. So this is a 4-1. Um, so there can be no pirate ship without its fearsome captain. Trapped in their cursed spectral form, mutated by the deep sea, they lead their deadly crews to pillage and plunder. The captain holds the shackles with uh, that bind boundless prisoners into servitude for the pirates. And so got good movement at 4. Um, has got a melee of 12. 10 hit points again. Range attack does 12 damage. There's three of those that it can then sort of make use of with its harpoons. Uh, great armor at eight. Good resistance there as well. Uh, what else we've got? So we've got ranged attack, non-corporeal. But it's, it actually, the harpoon is essentially like a boulder attack, is how that's sort of abstracted. The shackle master is new as well. The shackle master reigns control over their captured troops. The captured, so sea, sea creature, Rishalka and leashed, gain plus 10% uh, to hit chance. Uh, when they're with the captain, and so this uh, this one can if he's going in with sea creatures, uh, Rishalka. Now the other one we we don't get to see because um, that one is like a generated sort of fantastic unit uh, that comes in uh, like it's not just for the um, for the scourged, but it, essentially he does make good use of those with this uh, with this shackles that he does bring in, and then finally we have the Paragon Ghost Ship. And so this one here, you can see it says it's sort of land movement here, but this one is both air and land. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's, you've got to be the sea master to be able to then make use of this, to, to be able to go into the ocean as well. Um, and see through here, spectral terror. The spectral terror causes every enemy unit in battle to resist, plus one resistance uh, each turn, or they become terrified for that turn and unable to perform any action. So when they go in with, this, with their ghost ship, like, you can imagine, like, a, the crew, because this is also a transport. So it can transport eight other units with it. So one ship, you throw in all of the various creatures on, in board with the ship itself. It moves quickly and can move anywhere. And uh, you've certainly got, like, a, a raiding force of, uh, of, these, uh, of these terrifying uh, units. So uh, there we are. And then it's also got barrage. So this unit fires a deadly barrage against its, its enemy. All enemy units in combat are hit by a five-strength magical fire attack. Uh, so the range attack is like seven through there, but it does actually have this barrage as well. Um, the, one is a, the other one is a boulder range attack, like the, the cannonball, essentially, the, um, the, the seven through there, and 100 ammo of that one. So uh, amazingly strong with that. <coughs> it does also have the ability to ram as well. Sorry about my, my throat. This one requires the Cursed Shipyard, the Armourer's Guild, and the Alchemist's Guild, which are all, again, mid-game. And so there we have it, the Scourge of the Sea DLC, a very, very good addition to the... Um, plus there's a heap of stuff on the, on the, on the map that we didn't get to see. Um, if, I, I mean, if I send some of these, these off, uh, let's just go and start exploring. I, I won't worry about the, what's actually coming uh, back the other way. I'll just see if I can find other things to show you. Just to, for a couple of minutes, they don't get to see very far. Nothing new to research at this stage. Nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Just research that one, doesn't really matter. And that's all done. Actually, we didn't go st to start building any of these, so we want the Raiders Hut pretty much as a bit of a no-brainer. Um, the Marketplace, I guess, we'll grab that one next. Sawmill would be good as well, just to get the Bowman. So I'll just close those off. Right, okay, we'll end our turn. I'll just, I'll just do a little bit of exploring so you can see what's going on. Now I can keep on getting more of those as well. Magic Spirit. So I can just get these to... Um, just to do the initial site searching, these are nice, uh, cheap. These are also uh, non-corporeal, so it's sort of uh, they, they fit in well with the others. Come on, give me something to look at. There we go, more, more of the... Um, Pearls and through this other side. This one's got a reef. Now there's more pearls as well. More fish floating in this in the in there. That may be different down there. No, it's still more. Oh, here we go. A different uh, different one through here. This is a reef, so it gives plus two gold and reduces the production cost of buildings by twenty percent in the nearby town. They tend to be sort of like the stock standards with you know the fish, the um, the the the, um, the oysters, and then the 
So you've got, you've got the fish in through here, which gives you the extra food, and then the cost of units comes down. You've got the, um, the reefs, which give you extra gold, and the cost of buildings comes down, and then you've got the um, extra power and the gold from the, uh, from the uh, ocean pearls, uh, which is quite nice. And, and there is a, uh, a new spell now as well, where you can actually then go and anything you don't get access to, you can cast a spell and you get a big, big boost to your... Um, to your production, etc., when you actually sort of get rid of these out of areas that you just don't have access to. So uh, I'm really liking where the game is heading, except for the ability of not the the lack of ability to be able to um, <laughs> to uh, do what we need to do with starting again uh, with the same settings that we did start with. I really hope that they fix that at some time soon. It is super frustrating. There's nothing else through there. No, that's just a portal. Let's end our turn. Let's see if there's anything else we can sort of see. There's more reefs. But it's, it, the game is improving. It is improving. Yep, there's more there. So the sea has certainly been fleshed out uh, with, with everything it does do. Again, if you're playing as the Scourge, you do want to be starting on the coastline to get that other special building if you can handle it. If you can handle it. Anyway, I won't play any further, guys. This is uh, getting close, close to an hour now. But uh, this is a good, uh, this is a, this is a very, very good DLC. I've got to say, adds a lot of great content to the game, uh, different ways of playing the game as well. So I do recommend the DLC. Um, this is a great game overall as well. I mean, it's based on one of the classics, and it's just getting better and better. Um, you can always turn off the DLCs again if you if you don't like what you're seeing. Like when you sort of come back in, if we just quit back out to the menu. Haven't been here before, <laughs> uh, but if you if you want to go back to stock standards, just turn it all off. It's it's very it's off by default. Um, believe it or not, when you bring these things in, they are off by default. So you can go back and if you're a purist and you just want to be playing something close to the original Master of Magic, you can do that just by turning everything off. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, so that is the Scourge of the Seas DLC. Pretty much, I think we've covered pretty much everything that's coming in that particular DLC. It's coming on the 8th of February is the uh, launch date, I believe. And uh, in, that's in 2024 if you're watching this after that particular date. And yeah, hopefully we get an easy way to do a restart at some point. <laughs> I, I, you really need it playing as a Scourge at, in its current iteration anyway. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.